I want to act pleading with him. Please take me now, Baji. Take me now. I don't want to live anymore. And Swami was just walking in the veranda, up and down, and then he slowly walked down. My tears were rolling, oh. and he came and stood in front of me. I buried my face at his feet, and my tears were all wet in his feet. It was the most uh, memorable experience that I had uh, upon Swami. this recording for Baba and I series. Now brother, we would like to know how did you first get to know about Satya Sai Baba? Good afternoon and Sai Ram. My humble pranams at the lotus feet for Bhagavan and I thank you all for giving this opportunity to share this journey with Bhagavan. Well, I came to know Baba in the year 1965 and I used to get a Friends used to give books which I did not want to take care to read that. And I went to India for a pilgrimage and um, a cousin brother of mine bought a book on Baba and asked me to read which I didn't want to. I brought it and left it in the cupboard. I was involved in uh, many other spiritual organizations and uh, listening to many Swamjis who come discourses. I was basically a very spiritually oriented person. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my marriage in 1972, uh, a couple of years later, my wife read this book which was kept in the cupboard and she was so attracted to it. And she was uh, quite uh, amazed with that and uh, she started uh, getting some pendants from the shops, Baba pendants, small, small pendants, and asked the war for the children. At the time I had two children yeah. and um, asked me to wear one also. And I did that because I did not want to uh, make her get upset. And it went on and uh, until uh, uh, that's how I came into the Sai movement uh, where I, I started wearing pendants. Not very much fully committed to Sai, no. but at least came to know Sai. Was there anything that happened that made your wife so uh, attracted to Swami? In 1977, she was expecting the third child and uh, she had a fear of uh, labor pain because there were previous two births also, she went through quite a serious one. And she was um, all the time complaining, I'm very scared to go, very scared to go and so on. And uh, but the time came and I was, she was being wheeled into the labor room. I stood at the doorway and told her, today is Baba's birthday. Ah. She just uh, opened her eyes and that's all. She started thinking about him, praying to him as she was wheeled in. And uh, of course, the labor pain lasted about almost 12 hours. Mm. And uh, she came out of, after the childbirth, she narrated the incident where <clears throat> till about half an hour before the childbirth, she had no pain, nothing. Wow. She was in a daze Amazing. kind of a thing. Amazing. Mm. And uh, that was an experience, you know, which uh, she strengthened her faith in Swami, <clears throat> mm. according to him. And I also felt, you know, there's something strong about, you know, his, uh, his, his, his uh, the faith that she has. And uh, so I wanted to name this boy something related to Swami. I see. So I called him a Satya Seelan. Satya. <laughs> He's popularly known as Satya. Yeah. So he was born on a Swami's birthday. Oh, good. After this, our, our growth in Sai movement, you know, started mm. increasing and we started attending bhajans. Mm. On Thursdays, we go to PJ Center, Patalin Jaya Center. And uh, on, on Tuesdays, I will go to Kuala Lumpur uh, Bangsa Center, uh, bhajans. So, so it was a routine thing you know, for us to go attend bhajans. I see. And uh, we get, got more and more involved. When was your first trip to Puttapati? Uh, I think it was in 1981. The Jaga organized a group of devotees uh, to go to Parthi. We said, uh, so I joined in the group and uh, everybody thought, you know, if we're going with Brother Jaga, you should get interview and so on. Well, it didn't happen that way. 
but it was uh, something at that point uh, i saw swami some a great devotional i mean great man who can inspire a lot of people but there was uh, no not so much of uh, outpouring love for him at that point of time i watched all his, his things i was more interested in taking pictures of all the sayings uh, just around the, yes. uh, in the you know uh, prashanti mandir prashanti mandir because i was impressed by this and uh, came back after that and uh, uh, well that's only a beginning because uh, i was not uh, you see momentarily uh, uh, taken up and uh, fall at a, at a, at a swami's devotion it took me time gradual process gradual process then i came back i got involved in uh, uh, service of activities first service was say at, at the pulmore estate which is now is higher saujana golf <laughs> i see hotel and there the estate was uh, the children were there and they used to go in conduct classes for the children and tamil and uh, they were so you know taken up by my presence and my fluency in the language which i speak or is tamil and uh, we got close very close and my wife used to join also every sunday afternoon we are there to conduct these classes mm. and we did quite a number of uh, activities for them i uh, wrote a script for play and we put them expose them to some play in the uh, public places and took them to temples to conduct uh, bhajans so that the oh, exposure for them to you know give them the self confidence mm. they need because being estate children their self esteem yeah. is not so high that was uh, something till today after more some of them are in the 50s they're still in touch with some of with oh. us you know my brother You first got to know Swami in 1965, and your first trip was in 1981. So since then, you've been several times. I think not less than 20 times I would have been to Parthi. At one time, um, I was uh, after the darshan. Swami went for interview room, and uh, most of the devotees had gone for breakfast, and I didn't want to go for breakfast. I sat down there, and, uh, and since the crowd moved out, I moved it forward, and Swami was in interview room. a little later he walked out and i was sitting there and looking at him i was crying and crying and crying i felt uh, i my life is as fulfilled the purpose of life is fulfilled at the time i was still working for children or studying i wanted to forget the whole thing and I want to be one with swami i want to pleading with him please take me now maji take me now i don't want to live in mo Swami was just walking in the veranda, up and down, and then he slowly walked down. My tears were rolling, oh. and he came and stood in front of me. I buried my face at his feet, and my tears were all wet in his feet. It was the most uh, memorable experience that I had uh, upon Swami. A very emotional, emotional outpouring. So, someone who was, uh, I became the devotion grew as as time went on. I was uh, more interested in the Swami's messages than his miracles. I so I was not looking for his miracles, in which I looked uh, messages such as you know, uh, love all, serve all is something which and I wanted to do the service to mankind, and, uh, and only you can love, you can serve. It yes. was something was a profound message I had, and there are something to do the narrating to my work also. Uh, I was in a private company and. Uh, American company, mm. and uh, I worked. Uh, no, I don't say it's hard. It was my nature because mm. Swami said, "Work is worship, duty worship, is God." Yes. So that has imprinted in my heart so strong that I go to work. I forget about everything, and I be always doing my work so hard mm. and uh, non-stop until the time is over to come back. So of course, uh, you know your hard work always uh, recognized and. Uh, i was given many many promotions and recognized mm-hmm. by the company for the good work and hard work they did that is uh, how swami's uh, message has influenced my life how you it apply in your life and apply in my life and also i would say there's a uh, one strong statement which is said wealth without work is a sin mm-hmm. and also one thing at the end of the month when you get the paycheck you must 
ask yourself whether do you deserve this so yes. have you put in that work to deserve this paycheck yes. so that was one of the strong points which made me to you know really work and at the same time i was fully involved in the sai work Brother, among the many activities you are involved with, could you share with us some of the more significant ones? Well, uh, initially it was more on spiritual activities beside the uh, educational programs, uh, as state children and all that. Um, we went to tem temples that we used to conduct uh, bhajans. Uh, later, uh, I was involved in um, hospital visits on a weekly basis. The Kolaku Bubaru, they have retired home, children on a Sunday, every Sunday. I used to go to prisons. Prison, prison visit. visit, yes. Oh, wonderful. Uh, those days when it was prison was in the um, in Kudu, I used to visit there. Then when it was shifted to uh, Sungai Bolo, mm -hmm. I also continued to visit there. Very, I see. very wonderful, beautiful experience I used to have with the prisoners. I see. What did you do there? No, I, the prisoners will be brought in there, and then about 30, 35 of them will be seated, and then, and then I used to address them. Mostly, I talk about the good things about life and so on, and uh, more for motivation in the sense that uh, uh, think of the loved ones that you have. I don't talk so much of God and things like yes. that because it is not in the you know uh, in the blood. So I said, you love your parents so much. How much of sacrifice they must have made, and mm. today the Deepavali is around the corner. And uh, how nice if, if you're all there together, then how do you feel? And some of them I see when you hear, when you talk these things, they, they shed tears of regret for what they've done, mm -hmm. so on. I said, uh, so, um, some cases, um, uh, I used to bring them some vibhuti and give them a sense of a confidence uh, uh, to, to, do, to do good in life. Yes. And one of them asked me, told me, sir, why? Nobody came when we were young to tell us all these good things. Oh, so yeah. I felt very sad. Yeah. Parents also ignorant, yes. and the teachers uh, are unable to give them. So mm. I think the the social responsibility to ensure yes. that children all must have these good values, education. Human That's values why education. I put so much emphasis on the education in human values. So yes. It fact, has to start from young. Young, yeah, start from young. I always be too late. In fact, one prisoner saw, came and told me, I'm glad that I came to prison. I said, why? He said, if I had not come to the prison, I wouldn't have met you. And I, now I know when I leave, I know what I can do, how I can sustain oh, my life. wonderful. So these are some of the transformations Transformation that can take place. It's a, it's a beautiful experience that I had. Yeah, I was more, when, as, as time grew, I was more involved in the SAI organizational activities because I held on many mm. positions. So not to uh, go down to the uh, uh, ground level to do the service. Till now we are doing so many, so many things in a sense that, you know, I used to conduct a, a teacher's training for Tamil, for teacher training. Oh. I also participated in the training of the state teachers. And also the, uh, till now I, I do the parent satsang when the children are having classes, the parents gather and I used to have a, Oh, that's uh, wonderful. Parents at Sun Center. Yeah. That was one of the most uh, uh, beautiful thing in the sense that most of the devotees who come are not uh, uh, due side devotees. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the good values that you are projecting and uh, they feel so attracted. And believe me, today the teachers, most of them are from the mothers who attended this Sun. Oh. They were transformed and they felt and it is so good. they decided they want to teach. Teach oh, and they wonderful. became side devotees. I see. Yeah, so How the, many children do you have in your classes here? Well, this year when we started, the registration was 400 over. Wonderful. And uh, we have teachers about, uh, I think, uh, close to 40 teachers, trained teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the whole building is not sufficient to hold all the children. Yeah. So we had to break up into two sessions from this year. Uh, and, uh, and we use our neighbor Buddhist uh, temple, temple. Also, they also allow us to conduct the classes oh, so there. Yeah. And, uh, in front there, there is a, a food court, and the upstairs is empty, the authorities allowed us to use that. Oh, so wonderful. we're conducting classes in this way. But, uh, I, as part of this seva, the center has adopted an estate, Bukitagar estate. 
we adopted that for almost seven years. We've been doing it every week. We used to go and do a lot of service in a sense that we're teaching the children, the, the ladies all guided and helping the poor people with rations and so on. This is very remote estate where inaccessible to by cars and all that. So we used to drive there every Sunday and spend a whole day there and so on. And uh, this was going on for some time. And uh, suddenly I saw uh, a Toyota van was uh, brought by the salesman and parked outside the house and he handed over the key to me. I said, what is this? He told me. Oh, amazing. Uh, you know, uh, Sai Chinese, our Sai devotees got together, watched the whole uh, service activity that was going on. They collected the fund among themselves and then they paid for the Toyota van, paid cash and asked the salesman to send the car to the oh, house. Oh, wow. I'm so, again. so actually, it was really, really wonderful how uh, good work is touched by all these, you know, uh, Sai devotees and uh, they all responded to that. So you all had a van for your activities. It's still is there. It's one there. You can see the van is still being used, still being used. Uh, for uh, regular service activities. Service activities. Well. Yeah, once uh, Auntie Lau told me that she had an interview with Swami and Swami asked her, what do you want? And she, without any hesitation, she said, Swami, I want moksha. And Swami smiled at her, you want moksha? Yes, Swami. Then he walked away. And I felt, uh, she said this with me, Swami is someone is, uh, who is a wish-fulfilling tree. He gives everything that devotee asks. And I think her life, this life, she was is supposed to achieve the moksha. And uh, Swami in His grace has to choose a family where she can uh, continue her sadhana to the last part of her life. And uh, that's how I think she ended up. I'm very grateful to Swami for giving her into my family and uh, letting her stay until to the extent where she was almost 90. In her 80s, she used to do a amount of work and service that nobody else can ever do that kind of a determinations, love for Swami she had. And having said that, that uh, we had no choice but because she needed a full-time uh, nursing care and uh, we had to look for a home. And it was very great, great difficulty uh, to uh, send her away. And uh, of course she passed away after a few years, three years ago. It was something which is uh, Swami's uh, miracle that the opportunity gave me to serve someone of his devotee. Another one is something which I uh, must say is uh, a family had uh, two children and they were side devotees. Uh, they had some family problems and separated and the children were left unattended. And the children got nowhere to go mm. and they were, I brought them to my home and the boy was 13 and the girl was 8. And uh, they became my family till now. Part of their family. But, so they are actually, now I have five children and uh, everything shared equally with them, everyone, got them educated and uh, I would say that uh, it's, uh, it's they are talented children, they are all in the Sai, the boy is in Hari, you all know, he's so much involved in the spiritual activities and good speaker and singer and everything. And the girl is also a Balvika's guru, so on. Mm. So I felt that, you know, God gave us an opportunity to take these children into my fold and it is uh, to bring them up in a nice way. I thank for this and I think for all this, who is the main person, main uh, uh, responsibility is actually, or responsible for the whole thing, whole thing that happened is my wife. She's so full yeah. of love and she has really never said no. These are not just a few. There are many, many children who came and stayed in my house for a short while for because of some problem, difficulties. Stayed for months, stayed for years and so on and left. So our house was an open house for children who had some problems and so on. It's uh, Swami's grace mm. that we had. Among the many teachings of Swami, which is most meaningful to you, brother? <laughs> 
Uh, everything is useful, meaningful, but I think in the later part of my life, uh, something which I strongly applied in my life was, he said, you do my work, I take care of your needs. It's very strongly engraved in my heart. When I retired in 1999, uh, I was uh, left with only my house and uh, savings in my EPF. And uh, I decided to uh, become a full-time volunteer inside doing this work. Though there were many offers of jobs after that, I didn't want to accept it. Mm. And uh, I left it to him, you take care, let me fully involved in your work. Um, so that's the time my children all are still studying. Only my daughter finished a teaching course and she's working. Uh, I continue to do his work. I was a chairman of the center, Bangsa Center. Subsequently, uh, became a state coordinator. Then I was appointed as a uh, as a vice president of a switchul, and this took me to all over the country, visiting all the centers and. Uh, talking to the devotees and, uh, um, uh, and uh, rather sharing my experiences, uh, you know, motivating them to do more for Swami and so on. And I had no time to take care of my children's uh, education wise and things like that. Mm. And uh, uh, miracles that took place, only these miracles I could see after when I got fully involved in this work. Uh, he, my children, uh, I told them, you can't go overseas. If you want to study up to whatever, you can do it here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, my financial restrictions constrained, constrained there. Okay. And they did the Form 6 and all. They got through and they got into the, the two boys got into Malayan University. It was uh, also Swami's grace because when they did the uh, science stream, uh, they could have got into some other outstations and so on, uh -huh. which means I needed extra expenses to, you know, for the uh, yes. stay and things like that. They both of them got in the University of Malaya, so they could stay in the house and travel from here. And so the tremendous cost cutting was there. Oh, wonderful. And furthermore, they were all vegetarians. Yeah. And for them, the food will be a problem if they were transferred. Yeah. And number two, they, the other thing is they are so involved in the Sai Center activities. Yes, they could be here too. So it was yeah. uh, God's blessings there yeah. to do. And the, la the other thing is the third girl at that time, a few years later, she finished, uh, she also did Form 6. And um, she uh, got a place, she applied for university and she got a place in the University of Putra, Malay. Malay. It's about, about 40 kilometers from here. So I don't think she could travel from here. She had to go look for a place. I was wondering what to do. I must find a place, and she also vegetarian food and all this, and there was, uh, and there was also financial part of it. Yeah. Uh, I was very careful about utilizing my funds, you know. Uh, one week later, I got a let letter uh, where a check was enclosed, saying that you know your PT PT and loan is approved, and oh. here is your pay, first check for about I can't remember the amount about ten thousand or something like that. And please, uh, you can cash it, uh, open an account in the bank and uh, cash it inside. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So that had took care of her expenses for the, yeah. for the education part of it. Nevertheless, that nothing was stopped, stopped from the children involving in the SAI activities. They, they had been going to Parthi, they participated in dramas and so on. Uh, and uh, so that has uh, really uh, kept them uh, very involved in the Sai activities. So these are some of the... Uh, there were time when uh, I was really run short of uh, fun, almost running short. Uh, then suddenly I had a piece of small land I bought in 1970, small amount, and that's lying there. I forgot about it and uh, I couldn't trace who were the owners and so on and didn't know what to do. Out of the blue, somebody came and uh, said, yeah, you have a land there, yeah. And uh, you want to sell it? He said, yes, uh, yeah, I have right price, I'll sell. And he said, uh, uh, I'm keen to buy. Said, I told him, what is the uh, market price? He quoted the price. If I had quoted 10% of that, I would have given it away. He quoted such a high price. I said, then you can have it. And that's where the land was transaction that came very handy. Brother, to you personally, who is Sai Baba? Sai Baba to me is my life and my goal. Now, I do not have anything to pray for because he has given everything. My prayer today is always uh, 
expression of gratitude for all the grace that he has showered on me. And um, my only uh, rather prayer, I should say, is his message should spread far and wide. And people must transform, transform the life to project his, his message, his teachings. At the end of the day, I think what he came for is transformation of the individual. And uh, to realize that he, he is in us, he is with us, he is always um, the guiding principle. And I could now, I can really feel every moment of my life that he thinks through me, he acts through me, he talks through me. And that's how I look at him today as Swami. I think uh, whatever that he has given is beyond my expectations. And my expectations are all fulfilled. Or rather, I don't say expectations. It was he who put the thoughts in my hand, heart and mind. And everything is fulfilled. So I'm eternally, eternally grateful for everything that he has provided. Uh, that's the only prayer that I can add. Thank you so much, brother, for sharing from your heart. I'm touched. Thank you so much. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. God bless you all. Please bless you.